Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with bowed heads and humble hearts, O God, giving you praise, honor, and glory for another beautiful day. For this is the day that you have made, and we're going to be glad and we're going to rejoice in it. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand this morning to be blessed by your word, O God. It is through your word and by your word that we move and we have our being. So bless us this day with a word that, was take, that will take us to higher heights and deeper depths. A word, Lord God, that will take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. We receive the grafted word with meekness, Lord God, which is able to restore, which is able to deliver, which is able to heal our souls today, O God. For we know, Lord God, that every good and every perfect gift co comes down from above the Father of lights, with whom there's no variations or shadows of turning. So today we declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In every tongue that arises up against us in judgment, we shall condemn it and prove it wrong. For this is our inheritance and our righteousness is of you. So we thank you this day, O oh God. We ask that you use the man of God this day as you see fit. Let it be none of him but all of you, O oh God. And as he move into the demonstration of your spirit, we ask that signs and wonders will follow, that men may know that he, is, that he has been called by you, O oh God. And as for us this morning, we ask that our hearts and our minds be open this morning through the message of the scriptures, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that in seeing, we're able to see and to perceive. In hearing, Lord God, we're able to hear and understand what the Spirit of God is saying to this church, that we might continue to grow there by an increase in the knowledge of God. Father, there, there are many needs in this house this morning, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that the need be met. Father, you say that it is you that supplies need. So whatever the need is, whether it's spiritual, psychological, emotional, uh, financial, Lord God, or, or, or material, Lord God, we ask that it be met in this house today, Lord God, because we know that you are a God that blesses and not curse. So today, oh God, meet us where we are, Lord God, in the midst of our need. Meet us right where we are, Lord God, in the midst of current circumstance and situation. Meet us right where we are in a land of decision. We thank you, Lord God, for your guidance and your direction today. We thank you, Lord God, that you will fill the man of God with your spirit this morning. And as he moves, Lord God, you will speak through him. As he opens his mouth, Lord God, it will not be his words, but it will be your words. Let every word today penetrate, Lord God, every heart, every mind, every soul, and every spirit that is in this house. For change to take place, for minds to be renewed, for lifestyles to be transformed. We forget those things which are behind. Whatever happened yesterday, whatever happened on our way to, to the house this morning, we forget those things which are behind. Whatever happened last week or last week, we forget those things which are behind. And we reach forward to those things which are ahead. We press toward the goal for the prize of the overcall of God in Christ Jesus. So we thank you today for blessing us with your word. We thank you today for blessing us with your presence. For you say, with a two or more gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. So we welcome you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. And remain standing as we bring the man of God of the house to the podium, Pastor Nathaniel Patterson. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome to our listening audience. You may be seated. We want to pray for those that are viewing and are partakers by way of social media right now father we thank you lord god for all those that are viewing us right now father let the same anointing that's in this house transfer lord god through the cameras and lord god we interrupt the airways lord god and we take the prince off the airway lord god we bind them up lord god for any interruptions lord god and Father, we bind up his, his way, Lord God, so that your way will be released into the ears and into the hearts of those, Lord God, desiring to see and to be with you, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you. And we praise this time, Lord God, for truly this is the day that you've given unto us. This day we rejoice in this day, and we're glad in this day for you are Lord of this day. You are Lord over our lives. You are Lord over every circumstance or situation that may try to come against us. Lord God, we dis disperse, Lord God, your ability, your might, and your power to hold back all the powers that be of darkness, that the light of this true gospel 
of Christ will shine into the hearts of every ear, every eye, every heart that's tuned to receive the engrafted truth that's able to transform us. So, Father, we thank you this day, this morning, in Jesus' name. And everyone agree by saying, amen. and even you that's listening to us, amen, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Black History Month. We title this message today is that black is not just 28 days. Black is rich, but black also is perverted. Amen. And I need you to opening up, open up your listening ear so you could understand the nature of what God is saying to the church this day. And I know that that we are concerned about the war that just broke out. You know, the Bible says that when coming to the end of time, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. You know, you, you got to understand one thing. The Bible has to fulfill itself. But the thing is, are you fulfilling what the Bible wants to put in you so when that time comes, you'll be able to stand? Amen? You need to be able to stand. So, And every individual is responsible for themselves. There's no holding no hand and saying you or you or you or mama them or daddy them or uncle or, or Sue or Mary or Jane or Sally or Robert. You can't call nobody else's name but your own. So there's a responsibility for us to put on righteousness. And so we want to just start out by taking some things apart and putting some things together at the same time. You know, so I want you to bear with me and I want you to flow with me. Now, I am just the one that would open up a door, but it's up to you to walk in and for you to go further once that door had been, been opened. Amen? Black history should not be black for one month, but we are black all of our lives. We... We said last year and that we would celebrate our blackness throughout the year and not just for 28 days. Your history, you have to know your history. History, there is no yellow history. Only black history that alone should raise some flags up that there's something wrong with this black history which only gives us 28 days it is almost impossible for us to know our history in 28 days huh I, I want you to be with me You'll never know it. And the reason why the history that we're taught is an exclusive history, leaving out the black part of history. I thought y'all might have said, said mm, on that. You might have should have given a mm, on that. You know, but 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 I want us to be a people that would just 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 come into a, a place of just common sense, you know, about this this black history you know and like I said it's exclusive I want to I want to show you a quick video you know of uh, that was sent to me and I and I want to just let's open up with this video who can say some of what I'm saying and let you know that I'm not the only one that feels this way I don't know about you you know but I feel like it's something about the, sh the shortest month of the year they gave you to learn for black history that should tell you something right there that's a slap in the face. And for us to adopt and actually go by it, go by this? No. No. I've been waiting to say this all day. I do not support, I do not celebrate Black History Month. 
I think that that's the dumbest thing on planet Earth. It's 2022. When are, when are we going to be done with this divisive stuff? We don't need a Black History Month. Every uh, a day, every month is Black History Month. American history is black history. What, what are we even doing at this point? And then let me tell you how dumb it is. And, and y'all are still falling for this stuff. The, they picked the shortest month, I mean, the, yeah, the shortest month out of the entire year. To, to sh- the month with the least amount of days. Y'all are talking about Black History Month. <laughs> and you think it's a win. It ain't a win. We're Americans. We're past that. It's over. The Civil War was fought. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed. We're American citizens just like anybody else. And we need to start living like it in this country. Enough with this black and white crap. Black history is American history. The end. Amen. I don't... don't. That's good. I imagine that means some of us agree to that. I don't know, going through school, you know, I learned very, very little about me being a black person and my contribution to You know, and, 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 and the, the, the tragic part of act that was perpetrated on black people. You know, I don't want to sound like a Martin Luther King or whatever, but there are things that we need to know as a black person. There, there, there's an intrinsic value that's to us. There's a rich culture that's about us that we don't even know. That we are people that are so brilliant, people that are, that are, that, that are people that, are, that have a heart for, for people. Amen. I said we are people that have a heart yes. for people. Yes. <laughs> so leaving out our, our black history... It, 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 it leaves out a part of who we are. You know, it eliminates, you know, our contributions. There are contributions that we have made that are just incredible. I want to kind of like take my time and go through this because there's some things I want to show you, you know, and I want you to, to truly think about some of this that I'm showing you. Don't be just a person that just, just don't just take my word for it, but I, I need you to go and investigate what I'm saying to you. You know, if somebody were to tell me something, I'm not going to just take it as face value. I'm going to investigate to find out what it is that they're saying to me so that I can either delete or include that into my thinking of how I view things, huh? You know, now we know the ultimate Understanding the ultimate place that we need to be is first to what? Be in Christ. Amen. That's one of the first truths that was deleted out of your life, you know, and so in deleting that part, you know, and, and, and you, can, you can agree with me or not agree with me, the picture that's been depleted was a blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus. Now, I say things now, I'm going to have somebody to come in behind me that's listening right now that would actually take what I'm saying and take notes and do the history and do the investigation and do all of the studies that will take you a little deeper than where I'm taking you. And we both had agree, and which is my son. My son will come in, and he's going to take you a little deeper than where I'm taking you. And he's all, we, we both have sat down, and we agreed. Dad, you open the door, and he said, I'll do all of the leg work to show people further as to who they are and why we are in the position that we're in. We're not been, we have not been positioned to lose. We have been set up to lose, but that don't mean we have to lose. Amen? Amen. You know, we have to look beyond. It's not our fault for what happened to us, but it is our fault to stay in that place of what happened to us. You can always point a finger at why this happened and why I'm the way I am. But to stay there, it's a travesty. You have to rise up out of the ashes and you need to do something with what happened to you. Amen? Now, I'm I'm going to point some truth to you now. When we come to this place, you know, of, of... of, of, of controlled tragedy and like I said it's a tragedy but it's a purposeful controlled tragedy in our lives to eliminate the black part of history hmm? the history now becomes a lie don't get quiet on me right now the history that we've been taught there is an actual history book that I had when I was in school that had very little to do with me 
but it had everything to do with somebody else and not me. You know, and I, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm some militant, you know, got this, <laughs> wearing this banner and going through all kind of, I'm just speaking the bare naked truth. We all know that we had a history book that taught us about George Washington, that taught us about Thomas Jefferson, that taught us about all of the European presidents that we've had. And we know for a fact that only one black president came out of all the history teaching that we have learned. There's some deeper truth. But we're gonna, I said some stuff last year that you should have remembered, you know, but we won't go into all of that. We're just going to start afresh today. Now, I said to eliminate history's history the true history of history ends up being a lie. If I told you the truth about everything and I didn't tell you certain things, then I didn't tell you all the truth. In the Bible, which holds the record of a book that tells the truth, the whole truth, the Holy Ghost truth, amen, let's look at St. John. I want you to open your ears and eyes up right now. Look at St. John 8 and 44. When somebody starts to lie to you, don't you close your ears up to what they're saying. You need to identify what they're saying and you need to know what they're saying and where it's coming from. I think that's, that's where a lot of us miss out on. We don't look at where it's coming from. We don't look out where it's coming from. He says, if a person tells you a lie, you are of your father, the devil. Huh? Y'all see it, right? And the lust of your father, will you do? He was a murderer from the beginning, and he did what? A board not in truth. Because there is no truth in him. This is a part where I want you to understand where history was diverted. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the... Okay, now, so if somebody deleted the history of who you are, it was perpetrated for a purpose and for a reason because it ends up being a lie that was sold to us and we believed the lie for many years because we didn't go in any place outside. When I was growing up, I never thought about studying anything other than what was given to me. I just spoke to someone a couple of months ago and I said, have you ever heard about Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Black Wall Street. And they said, no. And I said, whoa, what's up with this picture? Do, do, how many of y'all know about Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Black Wall Street? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Anyhow, you know. Black Wall Street, I'm just going to do this and then we'll go on. Black Wall Street was an economy that was developed by black people and it was so successful we didn't need any other economy. Our economy was so rich and so successful until folks came in and burnt the entire place down killing innocent women, children, and pe- just innocently killing everyone. And the black folk during that time, y'all know we are some warriors now. We'll, we'll, we'll put up a good fight. And they said that we were winning until they went to the air because they were croppers and they had flew their planes to dust crop and stuff. So what they did went in the air and they started throwing down bombs, gas bombs, kerosene bombs, and burning down the entire Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, there were many other events of black folks coming together and being successful because we are people that have inherited an ability to be successful at everything we do. When God says, hold on, when God says, I anointed your hand that everything you touch will prosper, he was talking about you and me. 
Now, I hope you can read this right. Don't, don't delete what I'm saying to you, but investigate what I'm saying to you. Amen? Now, I just said that your father was the devil who was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Don't turn off your thinking. A liar and a murderer. Go over with me over to 1 John 3 and 10. In 1 John 3 and 10. So that those that tell lies are of the children of the devil. Wake yourself up. I said those that tell lies are of the children of the devil. Now let me let me let me let me say this right here. There are some children that have been displaced. You know, when I say displaced, their parents had abandoned them, neglected them, left them out for themselves, and he ended up being in a foster care, right? Okay, so then in a foster care, they're waiting for a parent to come and pick them up and bring them into a home because it is something that desire of human nature to be raised in a family. That's just an inherent thing that's in us. You know, we want to be raised by a family, a mother and a father. We need to have in our life. That's something that's natural. That's something that God created. And God wanted everyone to be in a family. That's his desire. That's why he opened up his house and allowed us to come in to be his family. Amen. You know, and so when they are adopted, if it's a good family, and a lot of times there's a lot of abuse going in that place because yes. some stuff, anyway. Yes. So they want to be adopted by a family. So when they're adopted by a family, they accept the father as being the father and the mother as being the mother. And if there's love that's in that place, it will bring about a tremendous amount of healing. Right. Amen. Okay, now, so God himself had adopted us to be in his family but watch this now now bring together uh, St. John 8 and 44 and tie it in with this right here and then I want you to look at the world and the way the world is are y'all still got your engines running you know don't shut this thing off now I want you to you got to keep thinking about this now watch this watch this and St. John 3 and verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifested. Now, push pause, you know, because I want you to get this. He says, in this. Let's just say, we can say, in the circumstances, in the situation, in the lies, in the deception, the children of God are manifested. In other words, the children of God are now maturing, and they're coming on the scene, and they're growing in the knowledge of who they are and what they are. So in this, the children of God are manifested. But then the part that comes in behind that is, 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 is and the children of the, they didn't leave, they didn't disappear, they're still here and they're manifesting themselves too and they're manifesting their plan and they're still telling lies and they're still murdering and they still have the same nature that they had from the beginning. Whether they wear hoods or cut all their hair or hmm. stay with me. In this, the children of God are manifested. Are, are you being manifested? Are you growing? Are you learning who you are? Are you holding fast to the truth? This is the manifestation. Manifestation simply means that you are now becoming. Are you becoming? Because if you're not becoming, you're going to still fall under the other jurisdiction of being of your father, the devil, still walking in some things that are not true, still walking in things that are dishonest, still walking in deception. It's a clear distinction between telling the truth and telling a lie. If I'm telling a lie, then I'm taking sides with something that I shouldn't be taking sides with. If I tell the truth, then I'm not no longer held accountable because I told the truth. 
do what you want to do with it because I told you the truth. Yeah. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Hmm. So then, who are we? Because if it comes down to us not knowing who we are or who we came from, we come in chasing something that was already inherited. I want to show you another video clip. I'm making a clear distinction for those that haven't caught on yet. When you cue it, I want you to just hold it for a minute. I'm making a clear distinction to, to, to where we are right now. You know, and there are two sides that you could be on. If you want to be on the side of the truth, then you need to know the truth, and then you need to know who the truth and what the truth tells about you and who the truth is. There is a truth, and there is, I just showed you, the devil is a liar. And so if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a part of telling lies and I'm a part of deceiving and being accepted, then, then that's who I'm dealing with. But if I decide to tell the truth, I separate myself completely from the one that's telling lies. That's why you can't have a household with, a, with lies and truth coming together. Amen. Doesn't come together. Amen. If you have a husband telling the truth and a wife telling a lie, you got a problem. Right. Vice versa. I'm just not picking on any particular person. If you have friends, one tells the truth and one tells a lie, they won't be friends for long. You know. How can two? Tell me about it. Two, come, child, tell me about it. How can two walk together except they agree? If I tell the truth and you tell the truth, man, we high five this. You know, because when I check it out, but if I tell the truth and you tell a lie, I'm going to walk away saying, man, I don't I don't know about that, man. I don't know about, about Frank's great neck. I don't know. His neck ain't too straight, man. Boy. Go ahead. We are people that, that know. We're people that create. I said we're people that create. Because of our creator, we have the ability to create and everything that you touch falls under the category go ahead fifteen untold black history inventors wasn't taught at school most people have heard about famous inventions like the light bulb the cotton gin and the penicillin but did you know that many of the products we use every day were created by black people Here's a list of 15 of them that, until now, you probably didn't know about. Frederick McKinley Jones. If your refrigerator has any produce from your local grocery store, then you can credit African-American inventor Frederick McKinley Jones. Jones took out more than 60 patents throughout his life, including a patent for the roof-mounted cooling system that's used to refrigerate goods on trucks during extended transportation in the mid-1930s. He received a patent for his invention in 1940 and co-founded the U.S. Thermal Control Company, later known as Thermo King. The company was critical during World War II, helping to preserve blood, food and supplies during the war. Dr. Shirley Jackson Dr. Shirley Jackson is an American physicist who received her Ph.D. from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1973. She was the first African-American woman to earn a doctorate in nuclear physics at MIT. In addition to her lengthy list of academic achievements, she also has an impressive number of inventions under her belt. Her experiments with theoretical physics paved the way for numerous developments in the telecommunication space including the touch-tone telephone, the portable fax, caller ID, call waiting, and the fiber optic cable. Today, Dr. Shirley Jackson is the 18th president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. Louis Latimer Inventor and engineer Louis Latimer was born in Chelsea, Massachusetts, on September 4, 1848. He collaborated with science greats Hiram Maxim and Thomas Edison. One of Latimer's greatest inventions was the carbon filament, a vital component of the light bulb. His inventions didn't stop there. Working with Alexander Graham Bell, Latimer helped draft the patent for Bell's design of the telephone. 
This genius also designed an improved railroad car bathroom in an early air conditioning unit. So the next time you're escaping a hot day inside your cool house, don't forget to thank Louis Latimer. Marie Van Britten Brown Did you know that the first home security system was invented by a black nurse? Meet Marie Van Britten Brown. Although she was a full-time nurse, she recognized the security threats to her home and devised a system that would alert her of strangers at her door and contact relevant authorities as quickly as possible. Her original invention consisted of peepholes, a camera, monitors, and a two-way microphone. The finishing touch was an alarm button that, when pressed, would immediately contact the police. Her patent laid the groundwork for the modern closed-circuit television system that is widely used for surveillance, home security systems, push-button alarm triggers, crime prevention, and traffic monitoring. Otis Boykin Otis Boykin's most notable contribution to science was likely the circuit improvements he made to pacemakers after losing his mother to heart failure, a contribution that has saved countless lives since. But this single improvement was among a long list of achievements. Boykin had 26 patents in his name and is famed for the development of IBM computers, burglar-proof cash register, chemical air filters, and an electronic resistor used in controlled missiles and other devices. Lonnie G. Johnson Did you ever enjoy water gun fights as a kid? Well, meet Lonnie Johnson, the man that gave us the most famous water gun, the Super Soaker. Lonnie wasn't a toy maker. He was actually an aerospace engineer for NASA with a resume boasting a stint with the U.S. Air Force, work on the Galileo Jupiter probe and Mars Observer project, and more than 40 patents. Yes, he is also working on the Johnson Thermoelectric Energy Converter, JTEC, which converts heat directly into electricity, but it's the squirt gun he created that has given us all the most joy. Charles Drew. Every two seconds someone in the U.S. needs blood. Thanks to Charles Drew, that blood is available. Drew was a physician, surgeon, and medical researcher who worked with a team at Red Cross on groundbreaking discoveries around blood transfusions. In World War II, he played a major role in developing the first large-scale blood banks and blood plasma programs. He also invented the, and get ready because this name is pretty charming, Bloodmobiles. These are the refrigerated trucks that, to this day, safely transport stored blood to the location where it is needed most. Drew was one of the most prominent doctors working in his field, and one of the only African Americans, during a time when blood donation was still separated along lines of race. Drew eventually resigned from his position with the American Red Cross over their insistence on adhering to this policy. It was 1950 before the Red Cross finally recognized all blood as being equal. Marion R. Croak In 2013, Marion Croak was inducted into Women in Technology International's Hall of Fame, a move that recognizes her remarkable achievements in tech. Croak holds over 135 patents, primarily in voiceover internet protocol, VoIP, some in other areas. She has another 100 patents currently under review. Today, Marion is an SVP at AT&T, serves as a mentor for women in AT&T Labs, and sits on the board for the Holocaust, Genocide and Human Rights Education Center. Lisa Jalopter If you ever enjoyed an animated GIF on the web, like this one amazing clip of a kitten being scared by an iguana, then you have Lisa Jalopter to thank. Jalopter was integrally involved with the advent of Shockwave, a technology that formed the beginning of web animation. She also played a major role in the emergency of online video, later serving on the senior management team at Hulu. Previously, Lisa was the interim head of digital for BET Networks and ran technology, product and business operations. Today, you can catch Lisa at the White House, in the United States Digital Service. She is currently serving as the Chief Digital Service Officer with the U.S. Department of Education. Philip Imaguali Due to cost, Philip Imaguali was forced to drop out of school at age 14. But this didn't stop him from becoming one of the greatest computer pioneers of our time. In fact, he's often called, the Bill Gates of Africa. As an adult, Imaguali began studying nature, specifically bees.
the construction of the honeycomb inspired him to rethink computer processing. In 1989, he put this idea to work, using 65,000 processes to invent the world's first supercomputer, able to perform 3.1 billion calculations per second. Jesse Ernest Wilkins Jr. Jesse Ernest Wilkins Jr. is one of America's most important contemporary mathematicians. At 13, he became the University of Chicago's youngest student. Wilkins continued his studies there, earning bachelor, master, and eventually earning his doctorate degree in mathematics at the age of 19. He's published papers in mathematics, optics, and nuclear engineering. As a mathematician for the American Optical Company in Buffalo, New York, he perfected lens design for microscopes and ophthalmologic uses. His greatest contribution to scholarship was the development of mathematical models to explain gamma radiation and his work on developing a shielding against gamma radiation. His other claim to fame came from working on the Manhattan Project. At the Manhattan Project, Wilkins worked with future Nobel laureate Eugene Wigner and made significant contributions to nuclear reactor physics, now known as the Wilkins Effect and the Wigner-Wilkins Spectrum. Elijah McCoy Often regarded as one of the most famous black inventors ever, McCoy was credited for 50 inventions over the span of his career. In an effort to improve efficiency and eliminate the frequent stopping necessary for lubrication of trains, McCoy devised a method of automating the task. In 1872 he developed a lubricating cup that could automatically drip oil when and where needed, vital in avoiding sticking to the track. The lubricating cup met with enormous success and orders for it came in from railroad companies all over the country. It was so popular that when other inventors attempted to steal his idea and sell their own versions of the device, companies were not fooled. They insisted on the authentic device, calling it the real McCoy. Garrett Morgan Those who survived either of the World Wars thanks to a gas mask have Garrett Morgan to thank. Morgan first created the safety hood to help firefighters navigate smoky buildings, later modifying it to carry its own air supply, making it the world's first effective gas masks. He also had the good sense to add a third position to the traffic signal. Yes, there was a time when traffic signals just said indicated, stop, or go, an addition that further reduced automobile accidents. Mary and Mildred Davidson Mary and her sister Mildred patented many practical inventions. They didn't have technical education, but they were both exceptional at spotting ways to make people's lives better. Together, they invented the sanitary belt. Later, Mary invented the moisture-resistant pocket for the belt. While disabled from multiple sclerosis, Mary went on to invent the walker and the toilet tissue holder. Subscribe to my channel now. Now, I, I want to say to you, there is a, a slew of things about black people that, that a lot of us didn't even know. I mean, how many of y'all know that, that all these inventions were invented by us's? Huh? There, there are so many, many, many more. Matter of fact, the, 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 uh, the person that put this together said, everything just about that we touched was created or invented by some black people person you know so knowing that wouldn't it put you on a different scale now of who you are because if you don't know who you are if I didn't know all of this you know and I started learning all of this oh let me say it this way let me say this right here you know when 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 we, we have been born to create because we were created in an image of a creator we have the same ability that the one that created us, we can create also. He demonstrated it. Listen, he demonstrated this, and I because I, 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 I got some more videos I want to show you because I, I need to, the videos do more than I can do for you. You know, you, I want you to see this. He demonstrated this behind first creating us. You know, and so now when you have an identity crisis, then you, the identity crisis falls in line where you came from. So now if you don't know where you came from, now you're going to have an identity crisis. I don't know who I am. You know, I'm not talking about your father, your mother. You can trace that back and you can kind of like get confused or whatever the case may be. And ever from that lentis, that natural lentis, it still doesn't show you the ability that you hold within yourself.
It's when you find out that you actually came from a God that created you. That's why the enemy is trying to give so many different gods because he doesn't want you to know who you are. So he'll give you all other kind of gods to make you think that you're not on the right path. This is not going. Listen to this. They're the only ones that I know, and I'm just going to name a few, that were assassinated, that were killed, was people like Malcolm X who found out the truth and was propagating the truth and had a voice, had an audience that would change the view of life among black people. He was, he was, he was murdered, right? Your father, the devil, was a murderer and a board not in truth. Here's another one. Martha Luther King telling the truth. He was murdered. Why was he murdered? Because he was bringing light to life that's in the eyes of those that will recognize and know who Christ is that this is the threshold that you need to enter into so that all of your life now becomes a life of truth and not living a life of a lie. Not knowing who you are alone puts you in a category of being lost. That's why he comes out in the Bible. He said, I came for those that are lost. In whom the God of this world, which is the devil, which is called some folks father and maybe not yours and not man. I said, maybe not yours, but he's not man. Because he might still be your father. Because if you're still telling lies and if you're still aboard out of the truth, you're living the life under the umbrella of that being your father. And the attributes of the deception. Those that separate themselves from who God is to who God is are those that don't abort in the truth. So when you don't abort in truth, you're living the life of your father, the devil. When you disobey the word of God, you're living your life under your father, the devil. So God wants us to create. He wants us to create, but he wants us to create with him how he wants it because if we don't create with him then we're going to create with your father the devil and what you create is not going to bring any type of to mankind are y'all still with me there's so 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 much that's tied up into this so then what, 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 what it is now? We are inheritors. You know, we, we, we are inheritors. And, and if, if, if you can understand being an inheritor means that there's something to inherit. Okay, what it is that we are to inherit, you know. Let's read this real quick and, I, and then we'll go a step further. In Galatians chapter 4. Why would, why would God put this in the word? Galatians 4 and 1. He says, Now, now I say that the heir, that the heir, that the heir, my question to you, are you an heir? See, because if you don't know who you are, then you're not going to know that you're an heir. And so now you're going to act like somebody else rather than acting like who you are. The Bible tells us that we are a royal priesthood. He says that we are a holy nation. Strange. Yeah. Strange people. I don't operate like those in the world. I operate different. I don't hold murder in my heart. There's no deception or lies in me. Search me. And I don't tell you to search me. I tell God to search me. Because, you know, I don't, you may find some stuff that ain't even true. You may find stuff somebody told you, but it doesn't have to be the truth. And people have a tendency to do that, to taint other folks' name. So then we want to come into the place of knowing who we are. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is 
a child differ nothing from a servant, though he be. Okay, now, now, I don't want to be redundant and saying the same thing over and over, you know, but if I don't be redundant and saying the same thing over and over, it may make you dumb. When I say make you dumb, that means you didn't get it the first time, so we got to say it again. And the reason why they call me a preacher, because I preach the same thing over and over and over and over again. Now, if that were a person that wasn't called, they would become disheartened. They will become frustrated. They will become, if, I, if they weren't called. But I'm called, and, 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 and my calling, I see the end. I see the transformation that you don't even see. This is the church of the true and living God. God said, I stand in the congregation of the mighty. I judge it among the God. God is calling you names that you can't even see in yourself. And he always does this, you know. And we haven't, we haven't yet opened our eyes to see who we are because we open our eyes to see who we are, then we know what our inheritance is and we know how to walk upright and we'll leave the place of telling lies. We'll leave the place of being deceptive. We'll leave the place of not knowing into a place of knowing. When you know who you are, you will jump over a lot of problems that you will have in life and later you can come back and solve the problem because now I know who I am. But if you don't know who you are and you don't know, you're going to run through every problem that there is in life and still not find the reprieve that you need to have because all you're doing is seeing problem after problem after problem. Why am I always going through this? Why am I always having this? Because you haven't accepted who you were. When you accept that God is your father, then you will skip over all the lies and deception that the father, the devil, has put in front of you. Because he put a lot of lies in front of you to stop you, to roadblock you, to hinder you, to keep you from finding the truth. If this gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. I came for the lost. Does it make sense? See, first of all, if I'm a 911 you, I'm not going to take you up on the fourth floor and let you lay in a bed right. and then check on you every <laughs> so many hours, shift change, and check on the next shift. If I 911 you, that means you needed a 911 emergency. So if you need emergency, that means you need to stay connected to allow the medication of the healing power of who God is to enter into you to push out all the poison that was injected into you. And the devil's still injecting lies, still injecting poison. And we still willingly take it, saying it's the truth. We willingly take it, saying it's the truth. But to mass, or not to mass is the question. <laughs> I'm not picking on nobody, please. I'm not picking on nobody, but I'm just saying, learn who you are. Amen. If you learn who you are, it eliminates a whole lot of deception and misunderstanding and lies that will hold you in bondage when there's no one holding you in bondage but you. You, you want to hear truth to go along with that? Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. If you don't forgive, neither will I forgive you. So that means now you are holding yourself in the bondage and not God, not the person, not no one, but you. One of the biggest deceptions of the devil, you know, is to make you trick you. Nobody got to come in. He'll make you trick you. And you start saying, I know. And if we finish it, I know this lie. And I live in it. Let me leave, let me leave you alone with that. So he says, he says, now the heir, <laughs> as long as he is a child, huh, differ nothing from a servant 
though he be Lord over all. In other words, God says that I have a kingdom and it's my pleasure to give unto you my kingdom. Huh? But if you don't know that God has given you something, you're not going to receive what you don't know you're supposed to already have. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. Now you can understand a little bit better. The children of God are manifested. Because at one time they couldn't see. And when understanding is brought to them, now they can see. So now they have to manifest what they see. In other words, now they have to digest what they see now and become what they see. So now they're becoming what they see. Now it's in them and now they're becoming into being what they were called to be. And the children of the, the devil. Let's go into four, four, four. But when the fullness of time is come, what's come? God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of a new father. We might receive the adoption of the sons. And because you are sons, God sent, had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Huh? Wherefore, you are no more servant, but a son. And if a son, then you an heir of God through Christ. Now you can see your inherited rights have already been documented, signed, and stated through the blood of Jesus that you are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And whatever Christ Jesus owned, you own the same thing too because now you have been adopted into God's family. But you have to now know what the inheritance is. You have to now know what your rights are. Amen? So then, if this... If this gospel is here, it's here because we are lost. Now, so then, now I want you to see this because this is all a part of how we have gotten deceived with, with different innovative things that will come to us. Because when you inherit something, that's all inside of you. you and your, your body know who you are. That's why a lot of us strive to try and get higher. Not all of us. But a lot of us strive to get higher positions, higher a higher place, a higher paying job, a higher position like a business that's, that's a, 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 a Fortune 500 business. It's always a strive to get higher because that's in us to be that because it's in, in, innate in us through the God that we serve and the God who is our father. Yes. It's in us. We don't have to. And so we always know that we should be in another place than where we are. Always, even in the crack house, I want to be the one to sell the dope. I don't want to be buying no dope. I want to sell it. You know, I want to own a whole bunch of crack houses. You know, so that's still in us, even though we're in sin. That ability is still in us because we know that we should be more than what we are. Don't you know that you should be more than what you are? If you have settled where you are, then you are in trouble. You have to have in you to want more than where you are. So then we know this, so then whatever method that comes to us, we're going to grab it and try and use it to catapult us into the place of where we are. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I am a just and I know it, even though I may not deserve it because my mind hadn't been cleared yet as to who I am. But I know I need to be better off in life than, than, than what I am. I know I'm supposed to have more than, than what I'm having right now. Even in the midst of my being out in the world and, and in sin, I said, man, I should be better than this. I should be better than this. Life has got to be better than this. So you see, you're no more a servant. You're now a son. So that means now 
I don't have to think that I'm this low person that haven't contributed anything and my family hadn't contributed anything and my ancestors haven't contributed anything. That's a lie. I'm going to tell you, let's, let's do it up to date. Let's do it up to date. When you watch football years ago, it was so uninteresting. You know, I click it on, I see, you know, I said, man, but when blacks came into football, that thing went up, man. Money's went up. Talent, man, now is being challenged because other talents now were being pushed down because you don't have the ability that, it, that I'm in, I've been inherited. I have an ability. I have a gift in me to catch a ball. I have a gift in me to throw a ball. I have a gift in me to run through people. Just run through them. It's in me to run through them. I used to watch years ago, I remember Jim Brown. Jim Brown had a whole football team on him, but he, in his mind and who he was, he was carrying a whole team across the, across the field. The whole team. And got away. Spiked the ball now, and he spiked the whole, the whole team too, because it was on his back. Even OJ may have been tainted. OJ was an incredible ball player. We can, we can name unteen black inheritors that inherited an ability that beyond other men because other men were liars and murderers. So God said, this is the truth. And I'm going to put this truth inside of it. And by this truth, they're going to learn how to live. And they're going to learn how to come up to another level but using the gift that I gave them. God put a gift in every one of us to soar. You know, but we have to find this gift with him. If you try to find it without him, you're going to find yourself still being lost with money. Yeah. Yeah. With money. With wealth. I want you to look at this with me. When these people came... They use, the in, 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 they use the inherent ability to think outside of the box, you know. I, I, I remember going to, to the city hall. Dang. I remember going to the city hall when we had, this building was up to be purchased. And at that time, we was in a position to purchase it. And I remember going to the city hall to talk about, because they were saying that we can only have so many people when we were over here and had all he said we you you've you've expanded the ability to have any further people coming inside this building you can't have any more because there's not enough parking and, and they was just telling me all the things what i can't have and so i said that well he said what's your future goal i said my future goal if we were to buy this plaza i said what we would do is that we would wait and as the uh the uh the contracts that were signed, the agreement, with the, the tenants agreement, we would let them, we won't renew their contract. We would let them just move out and then ask that we will knock down a part of the building and then ask that we will build another building. And he said, you still won't have enough parking. I said, but we will build another building and have it up in the air and the parking will be underneath. And at that time, this European sitting behind the desk started laughing at me. I mean, this just started laughing. And I looked at him for a minute, and, and I knew what I was saying was the truth, but he kind of confused me for a minute, you know, saying, am I right? Am I right? Can we? And so then another European said, yes, that's a great idea. And it stopped him right. He said, huh. and he looked at the guy saying, why did you say that? I want to make him think that he can't do this. You, you follow? I saw the whole picture and stuff, you know. See, you got to pay attention to your life and stuff so you see what's going on. This was something that was brought together and it was supposed to have been planned out and another laugh, and another laugh, and another laugh and say, okay, then you drop your head in your hand and, and walk out and say, man, that don't make no sense at all. And that's being done right now with a lot of us. When we come up with these ideas, you know, people will laugh at you to make you think that what you're thinking about it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. When they go out and do the same thing themselves. Another thing I remember right here. I had told uh, Nigel 
not Nigel Lewis, the, the entertainer. Nigel, who was filming for us when we was on television, I told Nigel, I said, Nigel, I got a great idea. I said, why don't you bring your cameras in and let video my family and me as a true life of a pastor and his family. And he said, man, that's a great idea. You know, and I said, can we do this and take it to a network? He said, you know what they're going to do to you, pastor? They're going to tell you that's ridiculous. That's not, that's, that won't go nowhere. And he said, now they will shut you down and they will get somebody else to do the same thing that you said. And it's happening right now. Mm hmm you know, so then we still have the ability in us to create. But then are we in a position? Now, if we're in a place of bitterness or anger, we're in a place where, we, where we're working against people and we don't like people and stuff, if we're in a place like that, then your creative ability is going to be cut off. Or it's going, to be, it's going to be prostituted by the enemy. He will make you create something that God didn't call you to create. Show that, that video that shows that we came from a, a wealthy place. This is a video that was done by my daughter. We express it in a different way now that we're here in America because it's a part of our DNA. Like you're God's original design, God's original creation. Modern humans originated in Africa and spread throughout the world. The oldest fossils of our species, Homo sapiens, are found in Africa at multiple locations. These trace back to one woman who also lived in Africa. Call her Scientific Eve. Y chromosomata, the original African ancestor of all mankind. God created the man from the dust of the ground and then blew his spirit into man and man became a living soul. Out of that same ground, which is the original grounds of Africa, from that same dust is where you find diamonds, platinum, gold, oil, is where you find all of these very high valued natural resources. And the highest, most valuable natural resource that has ever been created is mankind. But you don't want to do the work. You don't want to go through the process of becoming who you were created to be. So you try to take the shortcut. And Satan is always willing to give you a shortcut at the expense of your soul. So it's putting things in context and understanding that these external things don't make us more valuable. We're attracted to the, these valuable things because of the value that's coded in our DNA. One thing I think that is very important for us to come to the understanding of is that people of African descent are originally from a place that produces natural resources such as gold, diamonds, platinum, uh, cobalt. 90% of the world's platinum supply, 90% of the world's cobalt supply, half of the world's gold supply, two thirds of the world's manganese, 35 percent of the world's uranium, 75 percent of the world's coltan, and 54 votes in the United Nations General Assembly. This is what makes Africa so attractive and makes the continent a battleground for global powers. There are numerous fronts, investment and in infrastructure, military power, diplomacy, soft power, trade, geopolitics. Every country has its own interest in Africa. Like we, we come from a place that is just very rich in culture and in land. Mansa Musa was the king of the West African Empire, Mali, from 1312 to 1337, and he was also quite possibly the richest person in history. After his death, he was remembered for his kindness and generosity. Few foreigners knew who Mansa Musa was when he first became emperor of Mali or knew anything about what lied down in sub-Saharan Africa. However, all that changed with Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca. The Kingdom of Mali began appearing on maps throughout Europe and Asia for the first time. It was also through his journey that other world leaders became aware of the richness of the African continent, which led to trade and eventually colonization. Africa was full of natural resources. All the diamonds they came and got, all the gold they came and got, it. all the niggas they came and got. It. The continent is raped of all its resources. I guess the word they call it is colonialism. So even when we're taken out of that environment, it's a part of our DNA. So it's natural for us to revert back to those natural resources. We naturally attract to those things, which is why you see black people so interested in gold and diamonds. And we express it in a different way now that we're here in America. But 
it's because it's a part of our DNA. So I don't think that it's an issue that we are attracted to these things. Like I said, I think it's just a natural instinct. I think that we gravitate to these things because it reminds us of who we are, because it is just something that is within us, right? I think that the issue comes when you think that this makes you valuable. When you think that wearing gold and when you think that wearing diamonds makes you more valuable, it's understanding your own intrinsic value, like your God's original design, God's original creation. What does all this tell us? Well, for one thing, it's taken what's known as the out of Africa hypothesis. The hypothesis that modern humans originated in Africa and spread throughout the world. The oldest fossils of our species, Homo sapiens, are found in Africa at multiple locations. All males of our species are descendants of one man, Y chromosome Adam, the original African ancestor of all mankind. These trace back to one woman who also lived in Africa between 150 to 200,000 years ago. Call her Scientific Eve. She is the oldest root of our family tree. Africa is where the journey begins for everyone alive today. God created the man from the dust of the ground and then blew his spirit into man and man became a living soul. Out of that same ground, which is the original grounds of Africa, from that same dust is where you find diamonds, platinum, gold, oil, is where you find all of these very high valued natural resources. And the highest, most valuable natural resource that has ever been created is mankind. But you don't want to do the work. You don't want to go through the process of becoming who you were created to be. So you try to take the shortcut. And Satan is always willing to give you a shortcut at the expense of your soul. If I sacrifice myself, will I go to hell? Huh? In my trap house counting bottles, talking to my scale. Uh, my jewelry box having more water than Wisconsin. But so many people want it fast that they're willing to give up their eternity for a spot in time for for 15 minutes of fame so it's putting things in context and understanding that these external things don't make us more valuable we're attracted to the these valuable things because of the value that's coded in our dna that's just us it's in me it ain't on me it's in me amen amen y'all give leah a shout out Hello, my name is Nathaniel, and I came to America before I was born. In other words, it, not, it wasn't my doing to come here. I came from a rich place. Amen. We're going to follow up with a lot of this because there's a lot more to be gained out of this than what was just said here today. Let us pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for being the God of all creation, for showing us that which is called the truth. And that, Lord God, we are a one manner of people, Lord God. But, Father, we know that things have transitioned after you had caused us to, to be in the position of calling us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. Father, there are others, Lord God, that came in, and, Lord God, and that tainted and that caused deception and caused an ability to come into our DNA to cause us to think that we are not who you called us to be. But Father, we thank you, Lord God, because you blessed us and you covered us and you said that we are above never to be beneath and that we are your heir and joint heirs in Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are blessed by today's broadcast and would like to give a donation or love offering to support what we are doing here at New Life Rural Outreach Ministries, the place where love is, please feel free to do so at this time by sewing through our website, nowoministries.com, or through the app Givelify. Thank you. May God continue to bless you and prosper you in his word. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the fastest and easiest way to donate to the church, charity, or cause of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated sign-up forms to fill out, websites, or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser or church service you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. 
Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to specify the donation amount. Tap 2. Select the specific campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit card, complete your donation in one tap. You get an immediate donation receipt, and you can even share your generosity on Facebook or Twitter. Givelify lets you easily see your donation history with any church or charity you donate to. You can also accurately track your donations for your taxes without needing to hunt down receipts, bank statements, or acknowledgement letters. You can also set your home and favorites. Mark churches as your favorites so you can donate as frequently and generously as you'd like, even when you're thousands of miles away. Mark the church you normally attend as your home church for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. King Nathaniel Patterson. There are subjects that will bow down to me when I speak. This is my inheritance that came from the God that created me. He had given me power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. This is a replication of who you truly are. And you have to come to this place of royalty. And if you don't, then you'll never walk in the inheritance that God had given unto you. And saying that, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. May God bless you, and remember who you are.